Coming up on Mountain News this morning, a local community and technical college receives a grant so it can help further help students explore career at careers in health technology. And Attorney General Daniel Cameron joins others from different states to make an attempt to prevent transgender girls from competing in girls sports. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning to you. It is almost 5 o'clock on your Thursday morning. I'm Dakota Makris. Thanks so much for waking up with us this morning. Let's head over to Brandon for a look at our forecast, and we're still in a first alert weather day, but right now, I think it's pretty just chilly outside. It is, but there is some snow moving in. Okay. It's kind of scattered, widely scattered this morning, mm -hmm. but we have one new alert to tell you about, and before you ask, it is not going to expand. It is for the highest elevations of Harlan and Letcher County. Let's take a look. Winter weather advisory until midnight. I can I can see the questions on social media right now. Is anybody else going to be included? No, because it's for the highest peaks above 2,000 feet in Harlan and Letcher County. So again, we do not expect this to expand. Actually, we didn't expect this, but of course the criteria for winter weather advisory is one to two up to three inches there, and that's what they're expected to get in the highest elevations. Okay, so let's go on back over to satellite and radar for the last few hours, and you'll be able to see Again, some light snow showers out there, but more coming in back toward Louisville. So we'll see some pockets of heavy snow. Um, some folks overnight did see a report a few pockets of heavy snow and some of those higher elevations over into Wise County, Virginia. Got a uh, some pictures and some video over there uh, from one of our viewers that uh, shared that over Big Stone Gap, about 2,300 feet. So again, lots of snow still out to our west this morning on live pinpoint Doppler radar. Temperatures are still dropping. So if you're if it hits an area where you're at 36 or 37, you might see a little bit of brief transition there. But I think most of us kind of below that threshold this morning. Wind still cranking out of the west there, 13 miles at Moorhead. This is actual wind speeds, by the way, 10 miles at Somerset. And when you factor in some of those gusts, 20 at Somerset, 13 in Jacksboro, 25 in Moorhead, and 10 in Clintwood. So it's still breezy out there this morning. A little extra to max warm you need on your coffee meter to head out the door and your out the door forecast. Scattered snow showers off and on throughout today. I think they'll start to wrap up a little bit later. But about 36, I think, is the best we're going to do after our temperatures drop and then stabilize a little bit later on. Dakota? All right, Brennan, thank you. Well, a group is coming to the region in early February to further assist flood victims. World Renew Disaster Response Services will be stationed in Pike and Floyd counties performing needs assessments surveys for people who may need some extra help. Floyd County Long-Term Recovery Group co-chair Missy Allen says these assessments will better help long-term recovery groups assist people within their respective counties. They will come in and meet with people who were flooded and just see where they're at in the process. You know, it may be that they still have some building that needs to be, uh, some construction that needs to be done. They may just need help with some appliances or some furniture. Allen also added that anyone in Floyd County who has any need following the flooding can also call the judge executive's office at 606-886-9193. Hazard Community and Technical College received a $1.44 million grant from the Department of Labor. Well, the grant expands on the college's K-Tech program and the college partners students with employers at Jobs and Computer Information Technology, Utility Lineman, CDL, and Allied Health. Once we connect them to the employer, you know, if through job shadowing and, and other career explorations, if that's the path they want to choose, then they come to us for the training. If students are shadowing at one job but decide that career is not for them, then they can switch to another trade if they would like. It is National School Choice Week, and students, parents, and educators came together to support the school choice policy here in Kentucky. Supporters of the movement met at the back steps of the Kentucky Capitol Tuesday morning. National School Choice Week is meant to inspire parents to look for K-12 through schools available for their children. Throughout the week, events and activities will take place that are meant to shine a light on education options in their communities. One professor at Western Kentucky University spoke at the event. Now, many of my good friends in the education establishment are afraid to give families these kinds of options because they will worry that it will hurt public schools. But that simply has not been the case in states that have embraced educational choice. One of the speakers at the event also says students with learning differences have fewer schools to choose from in the Commonwealth. 
Yesterday, Attorney General Dan Daniel Cameron joined Attorney General Attorneys General from other states filing a brief to stop the Biden administration from allowing transgender girls to compete in girls' sports. Well, the brief opposes the Biden administration's interpretation of Title IX, which includes banning discrimination on the basis of gender identity. Last July, the same coalition of attorneys general challenged that guidance, and a federal district court halted its enforcement. The brief follows an appeal of the district court's ruling by the Biden administration. A.G. Cameron says he's trying to preserve the integrity of women's sports. On Tuesday, the ACLU of Kentucky met to discuss legislative priorities for the 2023 General Assembly. Some of the topics the ACLU is prioritizing is reproductive rights, LGBTQ equality, racial justice, and voting rights. Well, one of the topics they focused on was reproductive rights. The ACLU of Kentucky's advocacy director says that Kentucky has some of the worst pregnancy and birth outcomes in the country. And we need to ensure that every pregnant person in Kentucky is able to survive not only being pregnant, but the process of birthing a human in the time after that. Advocates say Kentucky lawmakers from both sides have advanced legislation to support families and parents. The ACLU also plans to prioritize the Crown Act and Clean State Slate legislation. Well, over in West Virginia, a proposed power project in Logan County would upgrade and replace lines and poles that have been in place for nearly a century. Officials with Appalachian Power say deteriorating wooden poles that have been up since FDR was president would be replaced with steel ones. 17 miles of new transmission line would be installed and new <coughs> substations are proposed to be built in the Argyle and t the 10 branch communities. They say this would strengthen the electric grid and reduce outages for hundreds. Community members had a chance to ask questions and get a look at proposed changes at an open house at Mann High School last night. Replacing the older infrastructure, the thought is, is that you're creating a more reliable, a more resilient infrastructure just because of the age of the system and just the age of the equipment. So, yeah, increased reliability should be a benefit of this project. Construction is not expected to start until the fall of 2025 and wrap up in the spring of 2027. The project will require approval from the West Virginia Public Service Commission. Well, thank you so much for getting your Thursday morning started with the Sierra Mountain News this morning. Coming up, the EPA plans to put a stop to coal ash being dumped into certain ponds to prevent nearby waterways from being contaminated with toxins. It's shaping up to be a cold day with some scattered snow showers. I'll have the latest in timing and moisture, uh, our timing of the moisture, and how much we can see in about three minutes.